So to prepare for uh, kraut burgers, you're gonna have to make sure that you get the dough. I put it in my oven that doesn't have any heat on it overnight. And in the morning, I knock that dough down. That, and then you're gonna let it rise again. And what, that's normally what you would do if you were baking bread anyway. So you can make this from scratch. You can buy kits to um, do bread loaves. You just wanna make sure you do about three for the amount that I have in here. So I pulled this out of the oven. Um, and this morning when it was still, it wasn't quite this big, I knocked it down and let it rise a second time. So this is what it looks like when I pull it out. As you can see, there's lots of bread. You can see it here, lots of bread. Once that's um, getting up on and going, then you're gonna need to do the meat mixture. So um, in this one, you're gonna put your ground meat, you can use ground turkey, ground beef, whatever your family eats, um, and you're gonna ground it up and you're gonna um, go ahead and brown it in a pan. So all I'm doing right here is I'm browning the meat in this uh, skillet that I have here. So you just wanna make sure it gets good and cooked. I'm using my um, Pampered Chef tool here in order to, uh, you can see it's got some sides on it and it helps um, to break that meat up while you're cooking it. Okay, so now all the meat has been browned um, all the way through and this tool's great because it breaks it up for you and it makes it nice and crumbly, which is perfect for this recipe. So the next thing that I'm gonna put in this recipe is the cabbage. So I have had my sous chef take all this cabbage. You can buy cabbage already shredded or you can take a whole head of cabbage and shred it yourself. And that's gonna go in here. I'm not gonna try to mix it in yet just because um, it's too fluffy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on top and then I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna let it kind of steam itself a little bit. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna cook down. And the more it cooks down, the better. So if you're buying the already shredded cabbage, you probably wanna get um, two or three bags of the shredded cabbage. I don't like the one with the uh, carrots in it. Get the one that's just cabbage. So this is in here. We're gonna put the lid on. Here it comes. And I'm gonna let that chill. And once that starts cooking down, then I'm gonna mix those things together. And I'll cut back in once that's done. Okay, so I've let this sit and mingle a little bit to steam some of the cabbage for almost 10 minutes, like between eight and 10 minutes. So now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna fold in, and I know it's got kind of steamy on you guys, um, is I'm just gonna fold in the cabbage. Now I've used pretty lean beef. Um, so it, it's about 93% lean. So I don't have a whole lot of grease in here. If you use something, let's say 80-20, you'll probably wanna drain some of the grease out before you put the cabbage in. So I'm getting this all mixed up in here. And if you're doing this in a regular skillet, you're gonna wanna turn it, the heat down on it, probably um, to between low and medium, because you still want it to cook down, um, but you don't wanna burn it. So I'm gonna let this mingle for probably like five more minutes and then I'll get back to you guys again. So I've let this um, go ahead and cook down a little bit more. So you can see the, the cabbage starting to wilt, starting to break up. Um, I have a lot of condensation, so we were trying to wait um, until we had a little less so that we could record this for you. So the next step, very easy, the seasoning step, we're gonna make, we're gonna use some pre-made seasoning, which is basically onion soup mix. I'm gonna use um, two packages of this. If you make your own, just whatever's equivalent to two packages of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in right on top here. 
already did that. Maybe if I can get it open. Scissors. Scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this over the top. And then I'm going to mix it in. So what makes this taste the best is when the meat and the cabbage start to caramelize on the bottom of the pan. So at this point you want to turn it down to simmer, a really low simmer, and keep an eye on it. Um, I probably go back and stir it every 15 or 20 minutes. I personally like this to cook down for 45 minutes to an hour um, because once you start getting that caramelization, it tastes so good. So I've mixed all that onion soup seasoning in and I'm just going to put the lid back on and I'm going to come back and check on it every 15 to 20 minutes. Give it a little stir and until it's caramelized and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Once that's done, then you're ready to start assembling. And like I said before, it's really a good idea to cut your cheese up. I just got a block of cheese and I cut it up with a cheese slicer um, and let it sit out so it's at room temperature because it makes the assembling in the fresh bread a lot easier because you can poke holes in it very easily with um, refrigerated cheese because it's very stiff. Um, and that way you're not poking holes in your, your fresh bread. Um, and then you're going to assemble it. So um, I have been browning this meat and caramelizing it probably for a good hour and a half, two hours. I like mine really caramelized, although do know that it dries out a little bit as the amount of time that you let it go on the heat. Um, right now I turned it off, um, but really 45 minutes is totally sufficient to get this done. So I normally don't do this on my stove top, but since I have a conduction top, it's just like a glass top. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up my hamburgers on here. So this is not a um, difficult recipe. It just takes a lot of prep and some technique. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray, just use a little bit of non-stick cooking spray on whatever surface you're gonna use. And then I'm going to take probably about a, two tablespoons of dough, and I'm gonna kinda just press it out. But you wanna be careful, you don't wanna put a hole in it, cause the holes are harder to close up. And you kinda wanna spread it apart. And I have some pre-sliced cheese here. I usually slice mine and I let it sit out to room temperature, cause when it's really cold, it can poke holes in your dough. So if you have it at room temperature, then it tends to be a little softer. But don't let it sit out too long, cause it can, then it can dry. But um, once I do that, I'm going to try to keep that out as best I can on here. And then I'm going to put, I'm using like a regular large spoon from um, my normal silverware drawer. And I use about two spoonfuls in there, which is probably a little over two tablespoons of meat mixture. And then you're going to pull it and gather it at the top. And this is my um, little trick to make sure it doesn't come apart. I'm going to do a little twist on it. And then I'm gonna put it on the cookie sheet and kind of press it down so it's flat. You can make smaller ones for the, you know, if you have smaller kids, you can make bigger ones for the guys. Um, just, it really depends on your own preference. So I'm gonna take some more dough. This one's a little bit bigger. Um, make sure when you let your dough rise that your oven isn't on at all. If it is warm, if it has any residual heat, by the time you get your second rise, It'll have dried out the outside and it makes it a little bit hard to um, put these together and assemble them. So um, the, the moisture the, the dough is, because um, I, when I remember when I used to do it um, in the microwave and let it rise and stuff, I used to put like a, a wet tea towel over the top to keep it moist. So this one's a little bit bigger. I put a little bit more meat in it and I may use a little bit more dough. And don't worry if something has a little bit of a hole in it, it'll be fine. But twisting that around helps also keep the cheese in there. 
um, you because you don't want it all out on your cookie sheet. Um, you can use any kind of cheese you want. Um, I like cheddar. My dad used to love pepper jack cheese. So I used to have to make half with pepper jack cheese and half with cheddar. So, um, and then I'd have to mark them so I knew it was what because I didn't like pepper jack cheese. But the cheese always goes down on the bottom. And if you have extra dough, you can just put cheese in it and wrap it up and cook it up and it's just like a cheese biscuit. So don't worry if you have a little extra. So I'm gonna gather this up and I'm gonna put um, six to eight on um, a cookie sheet. I have the cookie sheet um, lined with foil and then sprayed with nonstick spray. I do that just so it's easier to clean. Um, so once I get as many, cause you don't want them touching each other, um, but they can probably be about an inch apart from each other on the cookie sheet. And it'll really depend on the size that you're doing as to how many you can actually get on that cookie sheet. I'm going to do a little bit more here. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Now again, everyone's oven is a little bit different. I would recommend that you put it in for about 15 minutes and then check on it. Mine takes about 20 minutes in my um, oven. And what you're looking for is for the bread to cook and be like a golden brown. So when it's nice and a golden brown on top, and we're not talking like a light brown, nice like a golden brown, it looks like a golden brown bread. So I have one more to do here. And then I'll show you what the full tray looks like. Let me get some more meat in here. And you'll get a really good feel about how much meat you can make sure you can get in and still get everything closed. Um, I've been doing this since I was like 10, so I have a pretty good idea of what I can get away with. All right, so here we go. Here's our full tray. There, I got seven on here. Oops, they're sliding because I, <laughs> I put some nonstick spray on there. So I'm gonna make sure they're good and spread out before I actually put them in the oven. So I'm gonna put that tray in the oven. If it's you, I'd set it for 15 minutes, see how your oven does. I'm gonna set mine for 20 because I know it at least takes that much time. Sometimes um, it might take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna do my 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna start on my second batch. So just before I decide to go, I wanted to give you a little background on this. So why kraut burgers? It's kraut burgers because it's the cabbage that's added to the hamburger. So that's the kraut. It's not sauerkraut, it's just cooked cabbage. And the seasoning that goes in there, as you saw before, is just uh, onion soup mix. And it gets all nice and caramelized down. The best thing that these are for, we used to make them when we went camping. Because we can eat them cold or we can warm them up in the microwave, because everything in them is cooked. So we would just bring potato salad or macaroni salad and eat it with this. So I've been doing this probably over 30 years. I started doing it with my mom when I was about seven and I started doing it by myself at nine or 10. So it's something that um, you can start doing um, with your family. Um, it just, you have to get used to the technique and any of my friends, Jeanette, Denise, <laughs> my sister, anyone that's tried to do this without any practice, it's, it's a little more difficult than it looks. So you might wanna make sure you get the dough right because that'll make it easier for you. So once these are done, I'm gonna take them out of the oven and I'll show you what they look like. See you soon. And look at these, they're perfect. Nice and golden brown. See, so you guys can see. That's the color you wanna see on them. You want them nice and golden brown. So these guys, you can eat them as soon as they cool down a little bit. Trust me, if you bite into them right now, they're way too hot. Um, you can go ahead and serve them with macaroni salad, potato salad, coleslaw, whatever you want. And like I told you before, we used to take these camping because you can eat them hot or cold. So even if you pull them out and put them at room temperature, you can still eat them. 
If you don't eat them within four to five days, go ahead and put them in the freezer. They freeze really well too. When you're reheating them in the microwave, start off at about 45 seconds um, because they can be a little bit uh, temperamental and they'll be a lot hotter inside than you think they are and you don't want anyone to burn themselves. Um, they're a great um, meal just to take with you in the car. Like I said, camping, anytime you need um, just a little snack. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoy it. And let me know if you have any questions.